Hello, this is Sheila with Stamping Wishes and welcome to my studio. Today we're going to be doing a theater bowl card. Lots and lots of fun. And uh, I've made two of them. This was my first uh, rendition of it and I didn't put the stopper, stopper piece in it. It still works just fine when it comes out, but it's not as smooth going because it, of the way it was made, but it is cute and I will use it. All right, so the second one, I went ahead and put the stopper, but without thinking about it, this is the little stopper piece that's in it. If you look at it, it's kind of on the back side. We'll stop it. But when I put it in, I didn't think about the design of it, and so it didn't get a design, and we're going to do that today. The other thing that I found, it's really, really important on these pieces that you're going to put the slit in, that it be almost exactly this amount to keep it balanced and sliding perfectly. So hopefully today's card will do exactly that. I've learned my little tricks and stuff around. So the measurements is you're going to want to take and use the same cardstock. You're going to have two of them. And when you cut these pieces, you're going to cut all four of them the same, but it'll be four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And then you'll set the two that are four and a quarter by five and a half inches aside, and you'll take the other two and you're going to trim them to four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And then using the cardstock two, you're going to cut two each of these. These, these are going to be a part of your mechanism. And they're two strips that are measures three and a quarter by six and one quarter inch. Okay. And then you're going to also have one that measures one and a quarter inch by four and a quarter inch. Then you're going to need a DSP. And the DSP that I cut for this one, because it'll go on here when we go to do our uh, stitched rectangular frame, is I wanted to adhere it like so before I cut it, okay? So this particular one will measure four inches by five and a quarter. Now you can also do your panels that pull out, which are these pieces right here, with your designer piece of paper, but I wanted to stamp on mine, so I cut me out two of the cardstock, and it is two and seven eighths by four inches. And then for the back, again, because I wanted to stamp on it and I wanted it just to kind of fit into this piece availability in here. And so this particular one measures um, two and seven eighths by four inches. Okay, so um, again, you'll need cardstock if you're going to put a design on the inside, or if you're going to use all DSP, you'll just replace DSP with the measurements that I'm showing you here today. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to set these aside for right now, and we're going to go ahead and adhere to the, um, and I do want to keep these kind of uh, separate from each other so I don't lose track of where I'm at, but we're going to adhere this using liquid glue and either side would be just gorgeous with this. I love this new um, DSP and all of, I've set aside for editing my video, all of my uh, names of the DSP and everything. So um, hang on in the uh, video, I will actually give you the name of it and uh, you'll know exactly what we're using. The cardstock I'm using today is Granny Apple Green. So I've gone ahead and adhered that. So let's bring over our newest addition to my um, supplies, and that's our new. Yes, you have it, our new beautiful Big Shot, I guess. I don't know what we're ca calling it, to be honest. I'm so used to Big Shot, but as you can see, it's quite nicely sized. It's really sturdy, and I am just loving it. I started using it uh, yesterday. I got, I think I got it in. So anything, anyway, what I really like about it, if you look here, these are numbered in, in your uh, different places. So when I looked at the sandwich making for this, it said it needed one, two, because I'm, I'm doing a die um, die cutting, okay. So I need my one, two, and I just place that over the frame, and when I get ready to do this one, I'll place this one over that frame as well. So let's go ahead and set this down here, and let me pull out my rectangle dies. And here are my rectangle dies, and we're going to use the fourth one from the outside, so that'd be one, two, three, and four. 
Let's go ahead and pull it out. And what's kind of nice about this, and I do, I am eyeing it, but if you wanted to get your uh, ruler out, and I'm not sure if you can see this from here, but I think you can. But if you wanted to get your ruler out to make sure you were exactly the same, you could do that. But like I said, I'm just going to kind of give it an eye and put my top of my sandwich on and just run it on through. Okay. And it is a little snug, I noticed, um, going through here. But what I do like is, like in my other one, and it is going out, so excuse the little sound, but um, I noticed that it doesn't seem to bend my um, rectangles as much as the other Big Shot was. They, the, any kind of disruption of the shape of this was actually done from my other one. And... Uh, Hopefully, I didn't test it, but it went through there like butter. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? So now I've got a front for another card or side or a panel. I haven't decided yet, but that will be used in another card. All right, so um, I'm going to set this aside for right now. We need to do a stamping, and then I'm going to bring it back in to cut another piece real quick. All right, so let's go ahead and straighten myself back out from all that. I'm going to set that aside, and over here I've got a little piece of white, and the stamp set that we're using today, um, I'm actually using a couple of them in our colors. Go ahead and bring them out. I'm going to be using the Tuxedo Black, the Real Red, the Granny Apple Green, and the Mossy Meadow. Okay, so we'll set these off to the side over here for when we need it. And, <laughs> excuse me, the uh, stamp set that we're actually going to be using for the inside, super, super cute, don't stop believing. Isn't this precious? I mean, I can imagine a lot of different ones. But today we're going to use this little Don't Get Your Tinsel in a Tangle. Super, super funny. And then um, our little elf that's already tangled up in the lights. Okay? So what I want is for the strip that's going to go across my um, um, sliding uh, part, which is this part here that holds it from going all the way out, um, I want to put that little little sign on it. Okay, so what we're going to do is go ahead and stamp that, and I'm going to use Real Red to stamp it in. And then I'm going to cut it out with one of the smaller rectangles, so hopefully we can get it pretty close to what we need. And then I don't get red ink all over me. Let me bring this down where I can see it real quick, and hopefully not get my head in there. gorgeous. Okay, and I'm going to get my cleanser out over here and wipe that clean. All right, and let's put away the red. We don't need it again right now. Again, I always get red. It seems like all over me. I don't know about you. All right, so I'm going to real quickly bring in the big shot again and when this goes available which I'll have up on the screen uh, for sales for the customers because we got to test them out this month uh, be sure and get yours you're going to absolutely love it so we're going to take the smallest of the rectangles which is this one here and I'm going to go ahead and put it in here again we're kind of eyeing it and normally I would probably have placed down, since this is not a magnetic plate, I would have placed that down with some of the um, washi tape or one of those type deals. So, okay. So we've got that. Again, it just pops out and cuts like butter. And here again is another piece that I can use for another car. All right, so let's go ahead and move this out. We don't need that anymore. And I always say the next thing, let's get all your stamping out of the way before we start assembling the card. So at this point, I would have grabbed the smaller of those two, and I would go in here and stamp my little elf. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. 
and we want to kind of put him up about in this you know level with both sides because of the little piece that's going to come across when the card opens up we don't want it covering him up hopefully okay so we would color that and set it aside for time's sake I've gone ahead and done that and here's my little elf <laughs> didn't he come out cute um, and I will share with you on the video which uh, of my blends I used with it and clean that stamp off but I'll show you real quick that I went through and for the lights I used our new color uh, which is just Jade and used the our marker and went through and kind of colored the tips of the lights you know where they connect into the socket and I used that color then I used for his uh, costume both shades of the granny apple green shading it as you can see for his uh, face and hands I used flesh tone and for his little neck area there and then for his socks I used the um, dark cherry cobbler and the mossy I believe it was mossy no it was not it was the dark granny um, granny apple green here okay so that's how I did his socks and then his shoes was done with the light cherry uh, cherry light cherry cobbler and then they were shaded with the dark cherry cobbler and then for his lights we did summer in red some in the light mango melody I did some of them in the dark Bermuda Bay and I did some of them in the light night of navy so that gave us all the different color of lights that I thought came out really really cute okay all right so in addition to that our two pieces that we talked about for the outside once we score our line uh, what I could have used uh, designer paper but what I decided to do is using this set which is gift wrapped because I love love the bows and using the Merry Christmas from this tag buffet this is what I ended up doing I did stamp in real red on a plain piece of white cardstock aren't they cute Oops, wrong sides here um, the bows okay I used the real red stamped them real nice and bright then I used the punch which comes as a bundle with that set here gift wrap see and I used my punch and I punched out the bows and then I just used the edge of a uh, dauber that I already had set up set up for the coloring and different things that I uh, did so this was granny apple green and I went around the edges of all of it then using the granny apple green and the mossy meadow daubers these two here what I did was with the the stamp that comes here I set this up in my stamparatus and I placed it where that it it would only stamp the Mary right in the center of one of these then I took and daubed my granny apple green onto all of the Mary everything that was Mary then I came back with the mossy meadow and I went just on the top so I kind of got that ombre effect going on here did the same thing when I did my uh, all, uh, my uh, holly leaves and that holly leaf came from part of the gift wrap here and I used that all right and then I did the same thing when I lined up the Christmas again I used all the uh, granny apple green to cover the whole stamp and then I use the um, mossy meadow and what's nice about that is you can do one word at a time when you're using your daubers and here I'll show you the the stamp you can do it all on one dauber I'm, I mean on one lettering without affecting the other lettering like you would if you were stamping into a stamp pad so that's what makes those kind of fun and different and then I just uh, used some of the real red dauber went around the edges of my uh, pieces here just to kind of bring the the red against the green and carry the look of that DSP out and this is what I uh, ended up with didn't they come out cute so now on for the little piece that is this that's that's the one that will slide and stop your card from going what you want to do is get your ruler 
this was my preference of doing it, is getting all of my measurements. You're going to line it up in your cutter, but I found having the measurements already there was going to be so much easier for me than uh, if I didn't. So you're going to come down one half inch here, and you're going to make your little dot from there. And then you're going to come in at a quarter of an inch, which almost... Well, it is. It's right there. And I make my um, symbol there where I can see it a little bit better. I'm going to do the same thing on this side here. I need to come in a half an inch. And then I need to come over a quarter of an inch. And so over here would be it. I would do the same thing, and let's just... Now what will happen is on your cutter, you're going to start at one and go down, to, you're going to go across, you know, your half an inch here and make your two little cut marks, okay? Then you're going to cut down this way. Alright, so to save time, and I'll show you on the cutter just um, one idea of this, and you can do it by just using the um, the cutter piece of it, but you would line it up with your, your half inch line, which is right there, okay? And then you would take your cutter and you would come in a quarter of an inch, which would be about right there. Then you would take and drop the cutter back down again and come out the rest of your quarter inch and see how you get it there. And so let's do the same thing. We're going to go through this one because I've already uh, cut one out already, is you want to come in your quarter of an inch and you will start at where, and I'm actually using my eye to line this up and I'm going to line it up there and you want to bring it down to lining it up where the other, and sometimes you can kind of feel it when you get down there. And so what you end up doing is cutting out a t-shape when you get done okay so that's how that's done and let's go ahead and put that to the side and show you what you get out of it so you get this t-shape going on okay and what we want to do next is set this we can go ahead and put your uh, we can put the little sign um, on it here and so let's bring out what we did here, and that's where that's going to go. So I definitely want to use some of my liquid glue to ensure that the this is completely adhered down. I don't want it sliding and catching as it opens and closes, and hopefully it won't, because I haven't done this type before with this without stamping directly on. So let's, that looks about even. Let's slide it in and push it down. So we'll set this aside for right now. Okay, so now on the two pieces that measure, and make sure you have the one, right ones, well I don't have the right side there, we want to make sure this is four and one eighth by five and three eighths, which it is. Okay, and this is where we're going to score both of these pieces. The uh, first one is going to be scored on the landscape side, one of them at 1 and 1 16th, so it's just one little notch past the 1 inch mark, okay? And we want to score that. And then we're going to bring that one down, and we're going to go to 2 and 5 8, so let's go the 2. One, two, three, four, and five eighths. And then we're going to go ahead and do this. Okay? And we're going to do the same thing with this piece. We're going to go in at the one six. Okay. So the way these fold is this one will go this way and this one will go like so. And these will be your mechanisms that uh, work on your card, okay? And the other one will do the same thing. We want to 
fold it this way and this way. And again, these are going to meet up like so in the center, okay? And those will adhere to the back. Now what's important here, let's set this aside, we'll need it in a minute, is in this area here, you need these to be pretty even on here and the the stopping point is going to be on each of these score lines here and we know that this is three quarter of an inch if you come in here after I've cut it let's bring it over here you can see that's three quarter of an inch on each side right okay so over here leaving about I'd say um, we're gonna go in at half an inch I'm going to make my pencil mark. Okay, so we know this is at a half an inch, and I want to go up three quarters of an inch. And yes, you can do this on your trimmer, but again, I prefer to have my spots exactly where I can see them and cut them easily and not have to be. Uh, looking and guessing at any point. I want to know exactly where it's going to start and where it's going to end. So there's my starting point a half an inch up and then I'm going to measure out three quarters of an inch up and make my other stop point. Okay. So now what we're going to do is put these into the cutter. Oops. Roll away pencil there. We're going to put this back into the cutter here. And I'm going to put it down here where I can see it. Let's move the... Okay, and we're going to... And it's important that if you notice when I did this, they're, they're going to be opposite. The fold line will be in here, and the fold line will be here. And sometimes people, when they're trying to do it without setting their measurements first, they may end up having one slit up there and one slit down there. So that's another reason I like to know that I've got everything assembled correctly in there. Okay. And so, again, I'm dropping my blade, the point of my blade, right down on there. And then I'm going to bring it down there. Now, you can set this up where you have exactly starting and if you notice I I got it right in where it needs to be but if you prefer set it up on your um, trimmer here where that you have counted out and can see where that three-quarter inch mark is uh, for using your ruler okay and there we go all right so now we'll erase those off of there and then we'll put our mechanism together in a minute. Okay, so this has to go on the back of our piece of card here, like so. And again, you need to be able to assemble this where that it matches up as well as you can. And yes, you're going to have that, you'll see that little bit of an opening, but when they're flush against each other like this, um, you're going to come into that real well. Now if you notice uh, on this one here, you will have the issue with the piece being a little bit smaller than this, so you want to adapt it. Now some people would feel comfortable with putting the adhesive on and bringing them together and sliding it, you know, on into place. I do not. So what I'm doing here is lining it up, getting a good dry fit with it, and now I'm going to lay one of them down and hold the other one. That way I can maneuver one at a time and line them up nicely. Okay, so let's put our adhesive back here. And you don't want to get, never get too much adhesive because it can mess up your project, okay? And you know that this needs to, so I've not got the glue all the way down there where that I can comfortably set it down and I'm looking at both sides to try and get that sixteenth of an inch that's a difference on each side to balance there, okay? And use your bone folder and just come in here and give it a good swipe there. Okay, make sure it's adhered down. So now we're going to do the same thing with this other side. We're going to 
adhere this little flap down and if you notice I just got a little bit more zest into that one and got a little bit of adhesive there but we're fine okay so again I'm kind of closing that flap in for me so that when I come in here and slide this in again I'm looking for that sixteenth of an inch making sure that my two little slits here have lined up and that I'm flush in the middle there and then I'm set it down use your bone folder make sure your your adhesive has stuck okay so now we've got our mechanism for what's going to be going in here okay so the next thing that I want to do is I want to place this one in case I need to do any kind of trimming I want to see how this is going to be because this will be in between and I'll show you we'll go ahead and do this that way if I uh, need to trim it off maybe a little bit where I can readjust it and make more of a frame I can do that or not but I just want to be able to see that and really before I close this up I would prefer to go ahead and adhere that in okay so I'm going through the slit and if you saw me I folded just the one pieces down and you just kind of have to maneuver it a little bit and then it's going to come through okay and you this is where it stop your stopper is then you're going to go into this side and maneuver it in there let me turn it where I can handle it a little bit easier there we go and we get that in and then you take and open up your little panels there to stop it okay so now you've got your 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 formation of this being in now as you can see I probably didn't do a really good job of measuring this part in but that's okay if when I make this well maybe not once I get it out oh there we go yes it is just kidding okay so now we're going to put this piece in like so and then I can stand it up and I can see at that point everything when somebody opens this card they're going to get to see the whole picture the way I want it to and it's going to frame in there really nicely where those little flat pieces are so let's go ahead and do that and adhere that in and as you can see I had started my Mary on one of my little panels and uh, realized I had the wrong size panel and had to remove it so we're going to go in here with this and line it up and I'm kind of looking at my fold lines again so I can kind of fold you know cover those little fold lines at the top where it would show the most and there we have that and so now we can push this back in on both sides Okay, and bring it in the center, and let's go ahead and see if I measured this right or got them too. Ooh, I got them too wide. No problem. We can fix it real quick. Okay, so let's take a measurement. Evidently, I had one of my measurements off of what this. that you can do it real quick and without harming anything so let's go ahead and see how these are going to be and that's where this is going to be here isn't this precious and that one's going to go in there so let's go ahead and adhere these down be like opening a little package oops here's my little fur baby's hair trying to take a permanent place on this card I know a few of you have 
question or probably thought, why haven't you had any videos in the last couple of months? Well, I've had a very, very busy time. I was fortunate enough in one way that my daughter and granddaughter um, has come to live with us. So uh, before they came, I had to do some preparation in our uh, closets in our spare rooms because I used them for storage and had to rearrange things for that. And then we prepared my granddaughter's room especially for her with special painting and a beautiful makeup table. She's 15 so we fixed it up real nice for her and her little uh, cat Luke. And um, so we went after we did that we went ahead and drove down to Oklahoma where they live and picked them up and brought them here and now she, my daughter, is Brandy, is starting a new chapter in her life, and we're very blessed to share that with her. So, isn't that gorgeous? And that's why I haven't filmed in the last couple of months. But I'm back and starting it all over again. Now we need to score these uh, pieces. These are the ones that were three uh, quarters by six and one quarter. So on that particular one we want to score at one inch and five and a quarter. So we're going to come over here and we're going to score this at one inch and then bring it down to five and a quarter and give it a good scoring. Okay, so do the same thing again. Bring it to one inch and bring this over to five and a quarter Alright, so I think that's the last time that we'll have to use that. And then you want to bring these over and give them a good burnishing because they're going to be what your card um, will slide into. Okay, so then we want to do the same thing here. Give it a good little crease there. Alright, so now we're going to bring our frame back in and we want to adhere these on the back of the frame. Every once in a while I get them a little bit thicker than I think they should be, but normally, like unless it's going to interfere a lot in the framing here, I can trim this because some of that is just at wanting to kind of probably when I scored it, I scored it a little bit at an angle. And so you can kind of push that back in if you need to. Now we're going to again use our liquid adhesive because I find that um, for this type of a card that has an interaction mode on it like it does in mechanisms, we definitely don't want to um, use something that might come off easily. And I know we've got some new uh, tape runners out there from our uh, new catalogs and stuff, but I have not had the opportunity to play with them well enough and get to know them uh, to be using them in videos. So I still use my old standby that I like, and that's our Tombow liquid glue. So I was glad to see that stay on there. So I'm just, again, making sure that the adhesive has stuck to it. We're going to do the same thing. I always dry fit everything, so I just want to dry fit and make sure everything's going to probably go in there just fine. And it looks like it will. So we're going to again use our adhesive at the very top here on each end. Bring this over and bring my flaps over. Line it right up at the edge there and right at Alright, so once you've gotten your uh, pieces on the back here, then you're going to come over and use your one inch punch, and I do apologize, I got ahead of the game on this one, and actually this should have been done before these pieces are on, because it just makes it easier to go into, and when I did that, you'll see here I had accidentally punched all the way through them. I thought I was in between and I wasn't, but it won't matter because it won't show. All right, so once you've done this and you've made your little mechanisms here, you're going to take the card that we had just put together and you're going to slide it in on one side from for here and then on the other side we're going to slide it in. Let me keep it over there where you, you can see it. And we're just going to slide it into the back there. Well, maybe. Let me separate this out here. Okay, so we'll set, slide that in there. And then when it is closed, and let's 
get all the pieces together here. When it's closed like this and you go to open it, then you get the, and yeah, I have to apologize because I don't have the strength on that one hand, but uh, anyway, when you get open it up, you can see how cute and precious this is. And I'm also going to do the same um, design using a trifold type card because I'd like to see my uh, bows stay without being hidden and they're partially hidden here because of the size of them. And also uh, the same thing with my Merry Christmas. It's great when they're opened all the way but um, when it's closed then you kind of miss well even it, when it's open you kind of miss some of that so I'm going to do this card again but I just love this uh, theater tech, uh, card technique and all the different things that you can do with it so until next time let's bring out the other ones real quick this way you can kind of see what we've done and I'll hold them like so so until next time happy creating and God bless <music>